Hi, welcome back to chapter 12. Um, chapter 12 is actually um, our final chapter of financial accounting. And uh, congratulations if you have been following me uh, thus long. Uh, we successfully completed um, 12 chapters of study. And uh, um, based on the schedule, I arranging the chapter 12 along, uh, before the chapter 11 because I want to have a final project. And uh, this uh, final project is uh, related to the racial analysis and uh, horizontal and vertical analysis of financial statements. And also we're gonna talk about um, the earnings management, like what is the good earn, uh, earnings quality, what is um, not so good about the earnings quality based on uh, financial accounting standards. It's not uh, black and white, and uh, there's a lot of gray area that you can take advantage. And uh, in this chapter, it's, it's really well uh, illustrated the example, and I'm very excited to share with you. So without further ado, let's uh, talk about the first portion of this uh, chapter, which is what is the horizontal, what is the vertical analysis? Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, so as we kind of talk about a little bit, this chapter we are talking about a financial statement analysis. So the first part of this lecture, we're gonna talk about um, a comparison of the financial accounting and the information, right? And then let's just give, uh, there's a three kind of a comparison uh, example. And um, let's use Under Armour and Nike uh, as an example throughout of this lecture. So first of all, if the comparison is between, say comparison between companies, so that means we wanted to compare in the sales growth of uh, Under Armour with the sales growth of uh, Nike. Uh, so this is one kind of, uh, comparison like a peer comparison and there is another kind of comparison is a uh, other armor uh, under armor comparing himself with uh, historical performance right so like this year's performance versus last year's performance and another kind of a comparison is uh, one company comparing its industry general so for example uh, how is this company's risks uh, uh, comparing to the industry risk Right, comparing Under Armour's level of risk with average degree of risk for the sports apparel industry. So how do we uh, in calculate the industry uh, ratio? Uh, think about the industry. Industry averages can be obtained from the website such as Yahoo uh, Finance or from financial rating agencies such as Dunn, Bradstreet, and Moody and Standard Poor's. Okay, so first of all, what is the vertical? Uh, vertical analysis. Vertical analysis saying that we wanted to analyze in the company itself just to expressing each line item in the financial statements as a percentage of the same base amount. So for example, in the income statements, we wanted to compare each line items with a percentage of sales. For the balance sheet, we want to express each line item as a percentage of total assets. So let's look at our uh, example here. So this is the Under Armour and the Nike's uh, common size income statements, right? Comparison for the year ended uh, December 31st, 2016 and 2017. So this is the uh, uh, income statements. The line item here, we wanted to use the net sales as the base, as numerator, as denominator. So anything here, anything other than net sales, is gonna be the numerator here. So line item, uh, what I meant I line item is means each line of this, right? So for example, cost of goods sold is 2,585. It's gonna be 53% of the net sales. And the gross profit is the 2,240 for Under Armour. It's gonna be uh, composed of 46% of the total sales, right? So in order to calculate uh, this um, this number 53.6, uh, 53 we're actually using each line item to dividing the total sales. 
right? Let's look at the income tax expenses is actually 2.7%. It's actually equal to 131 dividing uh, 4,825, which is the 2.7%. Okay. So all amounts in nutshell, all amounts expressed as a percentage of net sales. So, and the red arrow here, uh, we wanted to indicate in the direction in which to read this statement. For example, cost of goods sold of the Nike company is 55% of the net sale, which results in 44% of uh, gross profits. And uh, the operating expenses are, uh, is about 30, 31% of our sales, and operating income is about 14% of sales. And the other income is a, uh, stands for 4% of the sales, hence income before taxes is about 14% of sales. And income tax expenses is 2% of sales and results in that income of 12.3% of sales. Okay, so in terms of common size, the balance sheet, we have Under Armour and we have Nike as well. So what we are trying to compare here is that we want to use each line item to divide the total assets. That applies to the equity and the return earning account as well. So as you can see, uh, the current asset equals the 53% of the total asset, and uh, uh, PP&E property and equity, which is long-term asset, is about 22% of the asset. And intangible asset is 17% of asset, and other asset is 7% of asset. And the, this red arrow indicates the direction in which we read this uh, statements. All amounts expressed as a percentage of total assets. Okay, with vertical analysis, we express each item as a percentage of the same base amount, such as percentage of sales in the income statements or percentage of total asset in the balance sheet. And when using vertical analysis, we express income statement as a percentage of sales, right? And uh, when we're using the vertical analysis, we express balance sheet items as a percentage of the total assets. Okay, so then what is the horizontal analysis? Horizontal analysis stands for we want to analyze the trends of, in, uh, of financial statement data for a single company over the time. Basically, same company comparing today with yesterday or comparing this year with last year. So basically it's also uh, representing percentage of changes. It can be increasing, it can be decreasing. We're using current year amount minus the prior year amount dividing the prior year amount. Let's use Under Armour as example in the income statement. It's listed the comparison of 2016 income statement and 2017 income statement. And then there's a column written, big, uh, it's a stands for the difference, the level difference, not the percentage difference. Level means that you just need to use the 2016 minus 2017 and you find actually it's $868. However, the difference is gonna be year 2016 minus year 2015 dividing year 2015. So in other words, we're comparing with last year, how much percentage will change as of last year, right? Okay. So therefore the 21.8 is actually equals to 862 dividing 3,963, which is the last year, year 2015's data. So that shows that our sales increased to 21.8% comparing to last year. And our cost of goods sold is the 25%, 7, 25% 7 comparing to last year. Hence our total gross profit is increased about 17.5% compared to last year. So when we read this the comparison, we read from left to the right. So the red arrow indication direction in which read the statements. And the horizontal analysis under, uh, of our under armor of the balance sheet is exactly the same thing. So we wanted to first list the 2016 and 2015 number and then we wanted to figure out the decrease or increase amounts, and then we divide in the last year's amount. So therefore 21.1% is equal to 466 dividing 1,499, and we get those 31.1%. So as a, as a uh, in conclusion, 
as we can see that the total asset of Under Armour is actually increased about 27% uh, from 2016 to 2015. And uh, uh, the equity section in terms of common stocks, they increased as well. And current liability and long-term liability, they all increased about similar amounts, right? So therefore, uh, in total, we have a total liability and the equity also increased 27.1%. Okay, so the key point here is we wanted to use a horizontal analysis to analyze the trends in which financial statement data, so such as the amount of changing and the percentage changing for a company over the time. So horizontal analysis exam trends between companies in the same year, no, right? Is it between balance sheet accounts in the same year? No, for a single company over time, there you go. Okay. So part B is a why we kind of review what we have learned uh, over uh, from chapter four to chapter uh, 10 regarding all the ratios that we have covered uh, in our book. And then we want to categorize them as a access, assess, assess the risk or assess the profitability. So that's a systematic review, our ratio analysis, right? So chapter four, and we talk about um, uh, re uh, receivables, sales, right, or cash. And, uh, and uh, chapter five, we talk about the account sales and accounts receivable. Chapter six, we talk about the long-term assets, right? And the chapter seven, we talk about current liability. In chapter eight, we talk about long-term liability. And chapter nine, uh, we, we talk about um, uh, stockholder equity. I think I may be uh, missed. Oh yeah, chapter six here is actually talk about inventory, right? Sorry, inventory. And then chapter seven is actually a long-term asset. And chapter eight is actually current liability. And chapter nine is, long, uh, is a long-term liability. And chapter 10 is actually uh, equity, a stock, uh, stockholder equity analysis, right? So what is the issue of common stock? So all these chapters, we all talk about the ratio analysis in the end especially current liability chapter and long-term liability and equity chapter, right? We are very emphasized. And also along the way in the accounts receivable, we also talk about the collections, how fast the people collect. Uh, and then also in the sales, in the sales, we talk about a, a return on assets. Um, so all those things that is very important. And now we want to systematically review them and then get a better understanding how do we analyze the health of the company by using correct ratio to look at what kind of perspective. Okay, so I will see you in the next uh, video and we're gonna dive more into it. Thank you.